last PFL season, an unlikely story was written. A talented fighter who battled homelessness won a PFL contract. Then he kept winning until his dream of becoming champion became reality. Now, Impa Kasunganai returns, looking for back-to-back -back belts. But this year, he's the hunted, as easy Alex Polizzi looks to play spoiler. Alex Polizzi gets it done! It's a new season, and it's anyone's to win. Oh, oh there it is! Former champs, perennial contenders, and a group of dangerous challengers from Bellator. All look to make this year their dream season. Live from Las Vegas, lightweights and light heavyweights begin their march towards a world title belt. This is the 2024 PFL regular season. Welcome, fight fans, to the weigh-ins. The PFL regular season continues in Las Vegas, Nevada. 155 and 205. It's the lightweights and light heavyweights starting their season. Ipica Sunganai, Alex Polizzi in a main event. Rob Wilkinson, Tom Breeze in your co-main. A card littered with champions, former champions, and hungry contenders. Sean O'Connell and Randy Couture, very happy to be here. A little bit of a home game for you, Randy. Yeah, absolutely. Good to be in my own bed. So the toughest test in mixed martial arts got a lot tougher this year because of the acquisition by the PFL of Bellator, but especially in these two weight classes. Absolutely. Four returning champs in one time or another in a light heavyweight division and a guy from 170 moving up for a title as well at 205. Uh, two in the light head, light lightweight division that were former champions. 50% of the roster. So signed up to fight four times in eight months, and now half of them are killers from Bellator. It just got that much tougher. All right, a lot of champs to talk about. Let's start with the most recent at 205 pounds. Impa Kasunganai fighting Alex Polizzi in the main event tomorrow. Last season, Impa Kasunganai started on the Challenger Series, and he finished as a champion. And Randy, he's already fought once this year. Yeah, he fought in the Champions versus Champions in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Amazing fight with the undefeated Johnny Eblen. A lot of people thought he won that fight. Amazing striking, amazing conditioning. Very, very well-rounded fighter. This guy brings it all, and he is on fire and ready to go tomorrow night. Look forward to seeing him face off in the smart cage once again. His opponent, Alex Polizzi, comes in with real D1 wrestling credentials. Some people think that could be the kryptonite for someone with explosive hands like Impa. Yeah, Alex, easy to see. Trains with us at Extreme Couture. We know him well. Wrestled at Northwestern University. Great Division One program there. Says fighting is going to help him pay off those student loans. Very, very well-rounded fire. Great athleticism. He brings it all in a cage, and he's going to be facing a very tough opponent in Impa Kasong and I. Going to be a great fight tomorrow night in the smart cage for sure with these two. And he recognizes the opportunity, right? Last year's champion, he's coming in relatively unsung. So Alex Polizzi is in the position now that Impa Kasong and I was in last That's season. Easy. Absolutely right. One of the great storylines on this card. Let's talk about the co-main event as well. Two seasons ago, Rob Wilkinson looks absolutely unstoppable on his way to a 205-pound championship. And, you know, early in his career, he was considered to be more of a grappler. But it's been the hands, the striking that really got it done lately. Yeah, 2022, he had four finishes, two in the first round, two in the second round. He looks unstoppable, knocking guys out left and right. Here he is, he gets off, made off to win the championship and put himself that strap around his belt. This... Australian is a very, very well-rounded fighter and looking to make his mark and show he deserved that championship. Well, his opponent in the co-main event tomorrow is a guy named Tom Breeze, who's got a big old chip on his shoulder. Tom Breeze feels like he's been relatively overlooked, even though he's got incredibly high-level experience. He's a bonus winner three times in the UFC. KSW veteran. This guy has the entire skill set at his disposal. 
Very, very well-rounded fighter. Physicality, athleticism, everything you want to see in a guy that's going to try and make his mark against Rob Wilkins in a former champ. So those are your main event and your co-main event. Let's take a look at the whole card, the whole main card that's going to be on ESPN2 tomorrow night. And, of course, we'll be simulcasting on ESPN Plus as well. Kasung and I, former champion. Wilkinson, former champion. Antonio Carlos Jr., also a former champion. Sada Busi taking on Josh Severa, last year's runner-up. He's coming all the way up from welterweight. Sada Busi, <laughs> at one point, was walking around. Well, not walking around, but he's cutting all the way down to 170 pounds. Now he's healthy. He's ready to go. He's ready to test out his third weight class here in the PFL because he started at 185. And you can see the odds there. Clay Collard is a favorite over Patricky Pitbull, a former Bellator lightweight champion, Mads Burnell, and Mikhail Dufour, both making PFL regular season debuts. That is going to be a stellar main card. Part of the broadcast team tonight and tomorrow, Brett Okamoto, insider. He's got more on this incredible card and especially one great matchup. <laughs> Yeah, you already talked about it there. Sadabusi moving up two weight classes, Sean. I mean, we know that Sadabusi is must-watch TV, but he will be doing so at a new home against a finalist in last year's uh, light heavyweight tournament, Josh Silvera. Let's take a look at a closer look at this fight. The Swedish dancer! Oh, oh my goodness! The knockout! Nasty! Josh Silvera cut his teeth against some of the best fighters in the world. There's that knee. Oh, oh, another oh. one. Josh Silvera to the championship. Oh, he's hurt. And he's down. And he's done. So, yeah, guys, like I said, I mean, of course, we're always looking forward to see Sadabu uh, see uh, in the uh, in the cage, I'm looking forward to seeing him here at the weigh-in. We I remember, you know, talking to him at, at last year's weigh-in, all throughout the tournament, cutting weight four times. I mean, that's very very difficult for this guy to get down to 170 pounds. He believes he's like my opponent's power never bothered me at 170, never bothered me at 185. It won't bother me here. I'm going to be very quick. Like you mentioned, Sean, four former champions here in this light heavyweight division in 2024. The only way this test could get any more difficult is if the man I'm going to throw it back to, Sean, was still Roman, this 205-pound weight class. <laughs> yes, thank you, Brett. That's it. You know, five, historically, in, in PFL's history, we have five light heavyweight champions. Four of them are in the building tomorrow. Three still competing, and one is just calling the fights. But, you know, the, the, the gang's all here, so to speak. Let's take a look at the early card here. No, you know what? I'll get to that eventually. I want to I want to talk about the season format. Sadabu C is moving up, so he doesn't have to do four weight cuts. Because if things go well, you have to fight four times before Thanksgiving. Ten fighters in each weight classes, six different weight classes, two regular season fights for each fighter. You get three points for wins, bonus points for finishing any round. The top four fighters will make the playoffs, and then a million-dollar championship in every division. And we have six different million dollar belts to hand out at the end of the year. It is the toughest test in MMA. Here's that early card I promised you. We'll start with the showcase belt, Marcelo Nunes and Jordan Heiderman at heavyweight and then right into the league action. Elvin Espinoza, regular season debut. Adam Piccolotti came over from Bellator. Gaji Rabadinov, Solomon Renfro, two guys who have unbelievable skill sets, are flying a little under the radar right now. And you can see that fight is almost a pickup. Bruno Miranda is actually a big time favorite over a former Bellator champion in Brent Primus. And then Doblinson, Yakshi Gorodov, and Jakob Neto. And Jakob Neto, I think the fans are going to like the way that this guy fights. PFL Europe champion, Jakob Neto, he's a favorite in that fight. And he showed up out of nowhere. Represents Slovenia. Not exactly a hot hotbed of mixed martial arts right now, but this guy came from the Olympic handball background. An incredible athlete, yeah. Randy, and big time power. Absolutely, great physique, athleticism that he brings to the smart cage, every, and, and we're excited to see him coming from PFL Europe, our new feeder program, moving into the global and see how he does on the global level. He's fighting another guy from Turkmenistan, the only, the one and only from Turkmenistan. Uh, <laughs> just call him Dublin. We're just gonna call him Dublin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Dublin. He brings a strong Sambo background. 21 victories this guy has. 12 of those are knockouts. So very, very sharp striking and accurate hands. A very well-rounded fighter. A lot of horsepower in Dublet. 
This guy is going to be interesting to see unfold, and he's also an actor doing some action films in a Game of Thrones type series in Turkey. Yeah, he showed us some of the footage. Guy's got sword fighting skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and he could beat you up with his bare hands. I mean, pretty scary all around. Very tough. You know, we, we're here to weigh these fighters in to make these things official. The voice of our PFL Smart Cage is always with us. Send it over to Andy Shepard. Thank you, Sean. Yes, Las Vegas is truly the fight capital of the world this weekend. And the PFL are kicking things off tomorrow night right here at the theater at Virgin Hotels Las Vegas as our regular season continues. All we've got to do now is when the fighters and to help us do that, let's welcome our president of fighter operations, Ray Steffo. Without further ado, heavyweight bout to showcase things, Marcelo Nunes, Jordan Heider. First to the scales, fighting out of the blue corner from Norfolk, Nebraska, Jordan Heidemann. He's the underdog in this fight, Jordan Heiderman, big time athlete, played college football at uh, the University of Indiana. 246 and one quarter pounds. Goes by the nickname Thor, and you can see why just by looking at him. Yeah, and in the red corner, very fitting. fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Marcelo Nunes. Nunes, a Brazilian black belt, no stranger to the smart cage, has fought several times in the regular season for the PFL. Very formidable on the ground. Scored a somewhat surprising knockout for people in his last outing when he, uh, he knocked out Danilo Marcus in the first round last time we saw him. So, well, he's rounding out the skill set. Trains with a big crew of really big guys. Up next, lightweight action. This is regular season, so points and a spot in the playoffs eventually. Elvin Espinosa and Adam Piccolo. First, in the blue corner, fighting at the Half Moon Bay, California, Adam Piccolo. Piccolo is the favorite in this fight. Bellator veteran, seven submissions and 14 pro wins. Uh, Fisher weight 155 and a half. Spinoza from Nicaragua. He's got nine victories, three of those by knockout, four by submission. Very well-rounded fighter. No stranger to the smart cage. But this is his first regular season appearance. He's fought in the Challenger Series. He's fought in showcase bouts. This is the first time he'll be competing for points and a shot at the million dollars. Up next, another lightweight tilt. Gaji Rabadnov and Solomon Renfro. First, in the blue corner, fighting out of Cleveland, Ohio, Solomon Renfro. The Black Dragon, Solomon Renfro. A lot of people think that this guy is just scratching the surface of his potential. He's only 27 years old. 155 and a half for Renfro. Took a short notice fight against former champion Magomed Magomed Karamov. Accounted very well for himself before eventually dropping that bout. And in the red corner, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, Gachi Rabadanov. Gachi Rabadanov is a veteran of the game, as you can see by his record. He's the favorite here. And Randy, if he looks familiar to you, it's because he's been in the smart cage before. Gachi Rabadanov part of season two of the One, pfl yeah i remember trying match. to pronounce that name <laughs> he went over to bellator he built a knob back
a conversation. Oh, a little push. Up next, Bruno Miranda, veteran of the PFL Challenger Series, and Brent Primus, former Bellator lightweight champion. First, in the blue corner, fighting out of Portland, Oregon, Brent Primus. Six submissions to his credit. This fight, almost a pick -em. He is the very, very slight favorite in Official this one. 155 and three-quarter pounds. Tell you what, Primus looks like a completely different person standing on the scale now than he did this morning at the official weigh-in. He cuts a lot. Yeah, he's a, he's big for this weight class. He's got impressive wins over Michael Chandler and Benson Henderson. And in the red corner, fighting at the Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Bruno Miranda. Bruno Miranda came into last season red hot, made it all the way to the playoffs before running into the two-time champion. Olivier Alban Messier. And one half pounds. That's his only loss in last in his last eight. Bruno Miranda, a sleeper pick for a lot of folks in this lightweight division. Up next, light heavyweight action. Dovletsyan Yadzik Buradov and Jakub Neto. First, in the blue corner, fighting out of Ljubljana, Slovenia, Jakub Neto. 27 year old Jakub Neto is the favorite in this fight. Eight and one as a pro. Uh, Fisher weight 206 pounds. Big time power coming off. A second round knockout that won him the PFL Europe Championship, $100,000 prize, and more importantly, an invitation to the global season where he can now chase a million. There's Dovlet, 12 knockouts in 21 victories. He is the slight underdog here in this fight. Came over from Bellator. Ready to prove himself in this format. Excited about the prospect of fighting so often. 205 and three quarter pounds. An academic background in law and economics. Just like most fighters, Randy. <laughs> This next bout will be the first on our main card as we transition to ESPN2 and simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. A former 205-pound champion, Antonio Carlos Jr. In the and Simone Bion. Fighting out of Genova, Italy, Simone Bion. The tallest light heavyweight on the roster this year at 6 feet 5 inches tall. Playing Seven. basketball in yeah. Italy. Yeah. Amazing yeah. story. Yeah. Transition from basketball into mixed martial arts. Won the European Championship. Get the nod into the global season this year. And in the red corner, fighting at the Joe Pessoa Brazil, Antonio Carlos Jr. Well, Shoeface is considered one of the best grappling specialists in the sport of mixed martial arts. Very, very high level black belt. 2021 PFL light heavyweight champ. Now, Fisher weight 205 and one half pounds. A big time television star also. An injury forced him out of past seasons and he had to go on Big Brother Brazil. <laughs> guy's got two million Instagram followers right now. <laughs> 11 submissions versus seven knockouts. This is grappler versus striker. Up next, more light heavyweight action in the regular season. Sadabu C and Josh Silvera. First in the blue corner, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Josh Silvera. 
last Severa. year's runner-up, Randy. Yeah, last year's runner-up. Father Conan Severa, legend in the sport, wrestled at Arizona State, brings a strong wrestling pedigree, and has grown up Fish in the gym two, doing jiu-jitsu. This guy's seen it and been, been there and done it all and just coming into his own. And in a red corner, fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden, Sadabu C. The first two PFL seasons, Sadabu C was a middleweight. And then the middleweight division went away. He said, okay, fine, I'll make the cut. I'll make welterweight. And he took a couple bites at that apple. He won himself a welterweight pounds. championship. And he said, you know what? That weight cutting stuff is for the birds. I'm going all the way up to 205, making his light heavyweight debut against Silvera, last year's finalist tomorrow. From there, we move to some lightweight action. Mads Brunel and Mikhail Dufault. First in the blue corner, fighting at the Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Mikhail Dufault. Mikhail Dufault, sorry, Randy, nine submission victories, and probably most importantly, this guy is the next Canadian gangster. This is OAM light. <laughs> and three quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting at the Husum, Denmark, Matt Burnell. Matt Burnell reminds me of Martin Campman, another Danish fighter who did very, very well in mixed martial arts. Fisher this guy's got one knockout, two submissions to his record, started in Greco Roman wrestling in Dane as a, as a Dane. I don't know about that Jimmy trains at though, Randy. <laughs> Extreme yeah. Couture for Mads Brunel, for those who don't know. Never heard of that place. I I can't wait for this one. Cash is clay collared. Patricky Pitbull. In the blue corner, fighting out of Natal, Rio Grande da Norte, Brazil, Patricky Pitbull. One of the famous Pitbull brothers, obviously. He finds himself an underdog here, but 17 career knockouts. He is the Bellator knockout king. He also, at one time, had the Bellator lightweight strap. This guy comes in with serious credentials. His brother Patricio is still in the title championship in Bellator. Put that on the line coming up, or actually just did in, in Ireland. And in the red corner, fighting out of Burley, Idaho, Clay. Collard! Cassius Clay Collard. Favorite here. And you can see also the striking credentials. 11 knockouts. Some of the best body work you're going to find in the sport of mixed martial arts. During the pandemic. Did a little moonlighting as a professional boxer. <laughs> Fan favorite for obvious reasons. Randy, I'm, I'm telling you, if this fight goes to the ground, I'm going to get real upset. <laughs> because the hands on both of these individuals, just the world needs to see what happens when you've got the power of Patricky Pitbull versus the skill and sort of smooth combinations of Cassius Clay. And the output of Cassius Clay, oh my gosh. That brings us to our light heavyweight co-main event. Rob Wilkinson and Tom Briggs. In the blue corner, fighting out of Birmingham, England, Tom. Breeze. Tom Breeze, don't let the bulk of those victories by submission fool you. This guy loves to stand and trade. Former middleweight who is really bulked up. You can see a lot of muscle here on Tom Breeze. And in the red corner, fighting out of Hover, Tasmania, Rook Wilkinson. 2022 champion in the light heavyweight division at four stoppages on his way to that championship two in the first round two in the second round lets his hands go but he has a lot of submissions on his record too very very well rounded most of the time rob wilkinson is the bigger light heavyweight the taller light heavyweight not the case here you can see tom breeze <laughs> looking at my eye maybe even a little bit taller does that change the dynamic in this fight
take a look at the tail of the tape for this one. Both of these guys, 32 years of age, both of them listed at six feet, three inches tall. But you can see a reach advantage, pretty significant one on the arms belonging to Rob Wilkinson and both with very long legs at 45 inches. Love this fight, Randy. Came together late also. Tom Breeze thought maybe he was only going to be an alternate in the season. And then he gets the call up because of an injury to Phil Davis. And now here we are with a stellar co-main event. And Brett Okamoto has Tom Breeze. Yeah, thank you, Sean. And uh, Tom, a lot of uh, intensity up there with the, with the uh, stare down with Rob. Just can you talk about just how excited you are to get this opportunity? Know that you're in this tournament, you're four fights potentially away from a million dollars. I'd say I just can't wait to get stuck in now, to be honest. So, yeah, I just want to get in there. Rob Wilkinson has not lost a fight so far in the PFL Smart Cage. What do you think you bring to the table that's going to change that? I think I'm a higher level opponent. And I think stylistically I'm a tough, tough fight for him. So, yeah. yeah. You look ready to go, man. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Best of thank luck. Thank you. John? Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Tom. So that is the one side right now rob wilkinson brett just said it he has yet to taste defeat in this smart cage he's been tested a little bit but yeah. does he get a loss for the first time in the smart cage tomorrow? i guess we're going to find out tomorrow i I'm, it's going to be a great fight i think these guys are going to step in there and let him go rob wilkinson is with brett okamoto thank you sean well rob a year off how excited are you to just stare another man down and know that you're 24 hours away from a fight uh, super excited to be back sure yeah and you coming into last year, you just had so much momentum going for you, man. All these quick finishes and then the year off. Do you still feel like you're carrying all that momentum or do you feel like a, a new person coming into the 2024 season? Uh, I think after this uh, tomorrow night when I get a knockout, I'll have all that momentum back and just keep cruising through the year. Welcome back, Rob. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Sean? All right. That means we've only got to get one more fight on the scale. And that, of course, is our main event between Impa Kasunganai and easy Alex Polisi. First, in the blue corner, fighting at the Belloy, Wisconsin, Alex Polisi. Polisi, the underdog here, balanced between knockouts and submissions. Four of each on his way to 10 pro victories. 204 pounds for Alex. Got some ears like Randy Couture, and you know what that comes from? That is a wrestling base. And in the red corner, fighting out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, Impa Kasunganai. Impa's another guy with a strong academic background in business. Uh, parents didn't want him to play athletics, and he was sneaking away to play football and ended up playing football in college. <laughs> yeah. Amazing athlete. Literally within a year of starting mixed martial arts, found himself at the highest level and one of the highest platforms in this sport. And one of the great stories in the sport last year, started as a challenger, ended as a uh, champion. 204 and three quarter pounds for Impa. Five fights last year, one fight already this year. This is his sixth fight in 13 months. Unbelievable. Impokasungadai, Alex Polizzi. Neither of these guys are huge light heavyweights. You fought in this weight class, I fought in this weight class. There is kind of a range when it comes to the size, uh, the speed, the athleticism. Both of these guys, as we take a look at the tail of the tape, you're going to see are probably relying a little bit more on the speed end of that spectrum. Six feet tall. Neither of them cut a lot of weight to make 205 pounds. Impa, 73-inch reach. Polizzi, 72-inch reach. 42-inch legs, a, a slight advantage there for Impa Kasunganai. But I think the theme of a fight like this one is, is probably the speed of these two competitors yeah. and the pace that can be set between a guy who grinded his way up through the wrestling ranks and, of course, what we've seen from Impa Kasunganai. And we've seen this time and time again in the light heavyweight division, especially guys quit cutting all that weight being middleweights and they find their success when they've got their legs under them they're not depleting themselves and they're fighting at the weight they walk around at at 205. Alex Polizzi is standing by with Brett Okamo. Well Alex not a bad way to make your PFL debut right main event fighting last year's tournament winner how excited are you to uh, get this opportunity in front of you? You know as I've said in interviews before it's it's been a little while since I've been back in the cage and PFL has given me a golden opportunity to make a big splash so I'm super excited. And Impa was a phenomenal story last year. What did you see out of him? Like, what was making him so successful on his way to winning the uh, championship in 2023? 
you know, um, it, it's an inspirational story to say the least. And the Impa's, you know, been putting in the hard work. He's been putting in the labor and, and really taking advantage of the posi of uh, the position that he's been given. Um, but I'm hoping that I can have something similar happen to me, you know. But PFL's giving me a big a big break here, and I'm just hoping to capitalize on w what they give me. Looking forward to seeing what you do with it, Alex. Thank you for the time. Sean? Talking to Alex Polizzi in the fighter meetings, I mean, this is the guy. He's got the right mindset coming in. He yep. knows that people are expecting Impa Kasunganai to beat him. He knows that he's the underdog in this fight. But he said, that's what Impa was last year. And look what happened. And yeah. that's, we've seen that storyline again and again in the PFL. Well, sometimes that underdog place is a good place to be. There's no pressure, no expectation. You just go out and do exactly what you're trained to do. So how do you roll with momentum from last year's season? Brett Okamoto has Impa Kasungana. Thank you, Sean. And Impa, we all know you here. The PFL is just down-to-earth guy. How has life changed, though, in the five months since you became a millionaire? Oh, man, it's been blessed. I've been, um, you know, help my family, you know, my team move forward, more challenges, and then I'm looking forward to starting school next week. Um, getting after it, man. And, you know, like, I'm inspired, right? You have a great division in the 205 right now, and that's my focus. Uh, life is a blessing no matter what, and, you know, last year was a special one, and this run will be too. You feel like coming into this one, you, you're defending something, or is it kind of a similar feel to how you how you felt last year walking into this tournament? Um, the way I felt last year walking into a tournament that I was champion before they even said it, right? It didn't matter if it was on paper or not. And I was going to be challenging a champion. I knew I was a champion before I even stepped into starting in MMA. Now, I'm going to go into this season. I'm going to claim this title, too. You know, I got five fights this year. PFL 2024 line heavyweight champion. I love that mindset, man. I think we all do. And best of luck uh, in, this, in this fight and in the entire tournament. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. But I'm not going to let this slip. He said, looking forward to starting school next week. <laughs> Okay, six fights in 13 months, as I already mentioned, a full slate this year. And if you're wondering, well, what's he doing? Man, is he taking, he's Harvard classes. <laughs> Ipa Kasunganai is going to go for an advanced degree from Harvard. That's what he's doing. Just like your everyday average. Yeah, a lot MMA of interesting fighter. guys in this sport, but he is one of the most interesting to interview and talk to. He's just a lovely perspective on life in general and just an amazing human. So the stage is set. Everybody's been weighed in. Everybody made weight. Congratulations to the true professionals for getting that first battle done. Lightweights and light heavyweights. Coverage will start with our pre-show at 6 Eastern. First fight, 6.30 Eastern time. Our main card, 9 Eastern. We'll simulcast on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. Tyron Woodley will be with us. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture. We'll have Brad Okamoto. We'll have Ian Parker. We'll have Andy Shepard. We'll have the whole crew. We just need you to join us tomorrow night.